Okay, here's the theory behind slow dancing in a burning room. So you can learn more than just how to play the song. That's C sharp minor pentatonic. Hear the notes in there? It's right there in the pentatonic. So the next part, that's still just double stops in C sharp minor pentatonic, except I'm adding a little. Otherwise it would be. That's also like vultures, but we'll get to that some other day. So you've got. Well, the next chord is A. That's my inversion of an A sometimes. Then we're in E. So A and E are next door. That's an E. And I'm just playing, stretching out the chords. C sharp minor. A, E. Hope that helps. Hey everybody, Gary here with Pow Music. I hope you enjoyed that explanation of the theory behind slow dancing in a burning room by John Mayer himself with our added fret live animations to help illustrate the things that he was talking about. So in this segment of the video, we're gonna go even deeper on some of the devices and techniques that John used. We're gonna talk about harmonized thirds, pentatonic stacks, the different cage chord voicings he used and how to embellish them with pentatonic scales. Analyzing and understanding the chord progression, we're in the key of E, we've got this six, four, one progression going on, so that ultimately you could take this song and move it in new directions. I'm also gonna go over a couple parallels between this song and Belief, as played by Isaiah Sharkey, who tours with John, and Jimi Hendrix's masterpiece, Little Wing. So we're just gonna go a little deeper. Before we get into it, if you like these combination videos of clips, of players we know and love with our Fret Live animations, followed by a deep dive lesson. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the bell to be notified of any new lesson, and let us know in the comments any other videos that you would love to see Fret Live added to, or a lesson on, or just any other topic. I'm always looking in the comments section. Also, as always, for Pound Music patrons, there's a traditional tab with numbers on the lines and notation on top that you could play in Guitar Pro or similar software or download as a PDF. All right, let's get into it. So the chord progression here is a 6-4-1. So in the key of E, we have C sharp minor. That's six, which is the relative minor of E. So this song kind of has a vibe of being sort of in C sharp minor, but it's actually in E. It resolves to E. Slow dancing in a burning room. Right, it definitely resolves on E, but it's got that C sharp minor vibe. So we start on the sixth chord. You know, just C sharp minor. Then we go to the four chord, E, F, G, A, A is four. And then finally to the one chord. C sharp minor, A, E. Hope that helps. So some people don't even realize what chords they're playing. So that's what John's talking about. Like, first and foremost, what chords are you playing? Because then you could play it in different ways all over the neck. You know, if you wanted to, you can just go. And that's totally legitimate, right? It's not as cool, but you want to at least know what chords you're playing. Then the next thing is what are the devices that are being used? So here. This is harmonized, harmonizing a single note in thirds. So we're harmonizing this note, the root of C sharp, C sharp minor, with, a, with the minor third. In the key of E, C sharp is a minor chord. If we go down the scale, six, five, four, three, two, one, like that, to E, we could harmonize all those notes. We just have to know what's major, what's minor. Six is minor. Five major, four major, three minor, two minor, one major. Seven, diminished, but minor third, and then back up to one. So knowing these devices, you know, we can do more things. But then he abandons this which is more of, this is a diatonic thing, not a pentatonic thing. You can't do this in the pentatonic scale. So he adds that one diatonic note, 
the second, the major second in the key of C sharp minor or relative to the C sharp. But then he does pentatonic stacks. So pentatonic stacks are awesome. If we just take this pentatonic scale, just play it in, in double stop stacks. Check out what Isaiah Sharkey did soloing on belief using just pentatonic stacks. I did a lesson on this little Instagram video he posted. I'll put the link in the description. Cool. So two techniques there, pentatonic stacks and thirds. Okay, now from there, we go to this cool A. Next chord is A. That's my inversion of an A sometimes. Where he's just playing the root, the fifth, and then hammering on from the second to the third. Ultimately, this comes out of the E shape because it looks like an E. If we think about an E as if our finger was the nut and slide it up to an A, that's the E shape in caged, right? But now he's just getting rid of the A and the D string and just instead doing this. Now I've played this chord like this before which is not the kind of Hendrix or Mayer or Frusciante or any, you know, insert so many players that are more thumb over. So you could do it like that, but he does it like this. And sometimes just the open A string, right? So we get that bluesy two to three. And then on the E, he also does the two to three, two to three. Right? So kind of the same thing on both. Now the E comes out of the C shape in caged. Right? So this is what a C looks like. And now I'm using my index finger as if it's the nut. If we slide that up to an E. Right? So, but instead of this E, we've got the open E taking making use of the open e key of e that was well e flat was probably hendrix's favorite key because you got that open e string but we're in standard tuning so key of e and we're just going to hammer into that shape starting on the third we don't need this root because we have the low e string root then we're into e so Now this little trick here is to me reminds me so much of Little Wing. So in Little Wing, Hendrix goes solo Hendrix goes what he's doing there is over the C he goes and then over D so same kind of technique same sound that Hendrix that Mayer is using here and of course you know Mayer is a huge Hendrix fan as well so it's not about copying it's just there's a style there's a vocabulary there's these moves that have been handed down, you know, in the music that we listen to, whether we we learn it as a specific move or we hear it and figure it out just based on ear. Um, that's what I'm hearing here. All right. So the intervals that you see are just the intervals of the chord, right? So on the C sharp minor, this is the root of the chord, the fifth, the root, the flat third, the fifth and the root again, right? And then these are the, the pentatonic tones, root, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, root, flat third, right? So these are always available. As tones that you could use to embellish. And that's what, so that's what John's doing there. And then here, 
know, John didn't add any embellishments in this video, but, you know, on this chord, we have this pentatonic scale. The C shape, or pattern four, and then over this one, we have pattern two of the pentatonic that goes along with that. So mixing these chord voicings with these pentatonic scales and diatonic scales, all sorts of cool things can happen. So that's just a little bit of a deeper dive on the theory. If you wanna go really deep, but start at the very first step, check out my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program, especially if you jive with these animations, because throughout the two or three hours of sequential videos throughout a 12 unit course we go from the very baby steps of music theory understanding you know the 12 notes of the chromatic scale how we could see those as intervals use those intervals to create a key within a key create chords and chord progressions starting with just triads to bigger chords to sus chords and seventh chords and ninth chords and then embellishing between the chord and the pentatonic scale diatonic scales minor scales harmonic minor all the way up to modes Cage part one, two, and three, but each step of the way, there's these song lessons where I draw the connection between what we're learning and specific songs that you could take these things and apply them to or see how they're used in the song. And there's also creative activities in each unit for you to do so that you could create using the concept. So it's a song based, creativity based deep dive into how music works on the fretboard with the fret live fretboard animations each step of the way. So the next 40 student live version of this course where you get access to a different unit each week and we do twice weekly lessons on Zoom where you could attend one or you could just watch the replays. That starts at the end of August. I do that three times a year. It goes for 16 weeks. There's three break weeks as we go along. Or if you're more of a self-paced, create your own schedule kind of a person, you could enroll in the self-paced program, which is half the price. You just don't get the live face-to-face -face Zoom sessions, which go with it, or that group interaction, which for a lot of people really provides a lot of motivation, community, accountability, and all that stuff. So links are in the description. You could watch the trailer. You could hear student testimonials on how it's transformed a lot of students playing and their understanding of the instrument. And as I said earlier, for all of my lessons, there's companion tab sometimes worksheets, sometimes extended lessons. So all my YouTube lessons have these extras just for Pound Music patrons. So for just $5 a month, you could go through the back catalog, get all the tab, all the downloadable extra resources. And what I think is the biggest value is twice weekly live Zoom guitar hangouts where we all get together, guitars in hand. We do even deeper dives on these lessons together where we could all share our progress, we explore songs live on the spot, figure them out by ear. Anything you're working on, all lessons, whether it's I'm learning a G chord for the first time or I wanna know how to play a G9 sharp five or something like that. So whether you're a total beginner just learning how to play a G chord or you're more advanced working on you know jazz chord progressions and modulations, it's all welcome there. You could either just come and hang out and listen or you could ask questions and interact face-to-face -face with myself and the group. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Before I go, I'd like to extend a special thanks to the following upper-tier POW Music patrons. William Creighton, Andrew Gunthart, Bill Laborde, Boomer Dell, Brad Tomlin, Bruce Yell, Chris Freeman, Dave Hubner, David McPherson, Derek Mickle, Don Stringham, Donald James Grass, Fred Locke, Joff Weatherwax, Jake Martin, James, hey. Jay Brilliant, Jesse Jacobs, Joe Prangle, John Barnes, John Bunyan, John Cushman, Jonas, Joseph McCarthy, Kay Carter, Kent Gresson, LW, Michael L, Michael Varney, Minor Pentatonic, Mu Jang, Nicholas Steinkamp, Patrick Bennett, Paul Davies, Randy Wallingford, Randy Yoakum, Scott Lee, Sean Ellis, Steve C, Stephen Pisano, Trampus Thompson, William Sitko, and all of the rest of the POW Music patrons. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Happy playing, and I'll see you guys next time.